So we're just leaving Walsingham now, James. Yes. And on this side, we have the Abbey grounds yep. with the original site of the Holy House. Mm. And here, we're walking past St. Mary's. Yes, this, so this is an old church. This dates back to the 1200s. So this would have been Catholic when it was built. Right, and, and today it's the Anglican Parish Church. That's right, yes, exactly. So this is quite interesting. It, we're talking about our history of our Catholic identity in this country. Yes, yes. And, and what many people don't realize is that we were a Christian country even during the Roman occupation. So you're going back to about, you know, 300, 200 AD even. Mm -hmm. 200 AD, not long after the life of Christ, we were a Christian nation. Catholicism came to this country um, again with the Saxons and you know with Augustine of Canterbury and then it spread throughout the country yes. permanently. It's a very Marian country. It and, is. And we're, we're forgetting that history sometimes. That's right, it's our legacy. Yes, but in a few weeks time the whole country is going to rededicate England to Our Lady. On the 29th of March this year, England will be rededicated as the Dowry of Mary. And the Dowry of Mary is an ancient title uh, of England that indicates the great devotion to the people of this country, to the Mother of God. As a marker to remember this and to be a memorial to this great moment um, of spiritual renewal in the life of our country, we've had a beautiful painting commissioned um, by Amanda de Pulford and it's called the Dowry Painting and it shows Our Lady of Walsingham in the setting of the Holy House here um, at Walsingham and um, trying to explain the message of the Our Lady at Walsingham which is the story of the Annunciation. She asks us to share her joy. This painting um, will go after the dedication around every single Catholic parish in England as a permanent memorial, uh, first of all to the Dowry of Mary and to the message of Our Lady to the people of England here at Walsingham. And so we have taken the painting to Rome um, and Cardinal Vincent Nichols, the Archbishop of Westminster, presented the painting to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, who did a wonderful blessing and we can see some wonderful pictures of the Holy Father uh, blessing this painting. And it's been a tremendous occasion. At the end of the blessing, we then went into the Basilica of St. Peter's and we placed the painting at the tomb of uh, St. Gregory the Great. Now, St. Gregory the Great, of course, was the Pope who sent uh, St. Augustine to England, the Apostle of the English. So within the same day, we have our Pope today blessing this painting and the Pope who started our story of Christianity, um, Pope Gregory the Great, placed at his tomb. So it really was a, a remarkable day. The dedication of England is a rededication because the first dedication was done by King Richard II. Um, and in, this was in 1381. And he was faced with great turmoil, great political turmoil at the time. Didn't know what to do. So he went to this great shrine of Our Lady of Pew, um, which is in Westminster Abbey, and he sought Our Lady's guidance and protection. Now his meeting was very successful. When he came back, he went with the whole court on the Feast of Corpus Christi. And in thanksgiving, he gave England to Our Blessed Lady for her guidance and protection. Now in England, the term dowry means that which is set aside for mother. It's a, it's a special... You know, it's what a man would set aside in the event of his death. So it's that which is set aside. So England, as the dowry of Mary, is understood as that England has been set aside for Mary, that she may guide and protect us. Now that's been such a significant part of, of English Catholic history that we, had, we were beginning to lose sight of. Equally important, of course, is the message of Our Lady to the people of England here at Walsingham. So these two great moments, the history of our country and its great devotion to the Mother of God. If you drive around the English countryside, every other church is called St. Mary's. So many of our flowers are named after, after Our Lady. 
And so this great tradition of devotion is an important part of our identity as English Catholics. What's been beautiful to experience has been um, talking to several people who after they've been around the tour shared how touched they were by the, the beauty of the exhibit um, and by the arrangement and the content of the panels and how it really touched them at a deeper level through this diary tour and this exhibition. If people are really touched at a deeper level to come to know and love Our Lady and the message of Walsingham, things can change in their own parish and also in this country, but by individuals who have a deeper conversion experience and they can affect change within their families, their parish groups, etc. And I think this resonated with quite a few of the pilgrims um, or coming to visit here, the exhibition. We're going to have this rededication of England as Our Lady's Dowry, which is a re-entrustment to Our Lady mm -hmm. of our, ourselves, our families, yes. our communities, parishes, and of the country as a whole. That's right. We're rededicating our country to Our Lady. Right. It's an important fact to remember that just as Richard II did this for the first time. Yes, and he did back, it. He did it in a time of political turmoil. Exactly. Which I think can be significant for us, that you know, whatever we're going through, and there's always challenges in every time, yep. that there's this invitation to re-entrust everything to Our Lady and that we can be sure of her guidance and protection. Correct. Right. That's exactly it. The, the original message of Walsingham is really Our Lady saying that she wanted this replica of the Holy House to be built as a mm. memorial, as a reminder of the joy of her Annunciation. So it's a message of joy um, that she wants us, wants us to share in. And it's also, she said, that all who come here, and we're speaking about the many, many thousands of pilgrims who've come here, that they will all find help in their need. She offers this comfort and solace. James, you've been living in Walsingham for six years. What's the message of Walsingham for you? For me, the message of Walsingham is the joy of the Annunciation. It's the incarnation when the Word was made flesh. So we are to share in this joy, share with Mary in her joy of the Annunciation. And so it's a message of being joyful, really. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very attractive, isn't it? There are so many families who've moved here. I mean, our own families. Yes. But it is attracting um, pilgrims and families. It is, and it's the uh, rector of the Shrine of Our Lady of Walsingham. Monsignor John Armitage, who's been really promoting this message, trying to uh, bring back this message of Walsingham and to spread it to the whole country. Now the events of 1061 arose out of the devotion of Richeldis who had a great desire to honour the Mother of God. Walsingham is certainly not the oldest Marian shrine in England, but it is the place where Our Lady made herself known and asked for the replica of the Holy House to be built so that all could share in the joy of my Annunciation. The fruits of this manifestation of the Spirit brought joy, comfort, hope to all who come and continue to come on pilgrimage to Walsingham. Walsingham, the ballad tells us, in thee is built new Nazareth, where shall be held in memorial the great joy of my Annunciation. First of my joys, the foundation and origin, roots of mankind's gracious redemption. When Gabriel gave me this news, to be a mother through humility, and God's son conceive in virginity. O England, you have great cause to be glad, for you are compared to the promised land Zion. You are called in every realm and region, the Holy Land, Our Lady's Dowry. In you is built new Nazareth, a house to the honour of the Mother of God and her most glorious salutation. When Gabriel said at old Nazareth, Ave, this same joy shall be daily and forever remembered.
In the book of Joshua, the Israelites are about to invade the Promised Land. They're just preparing for it. And they're told to fix their eyes on the Ark of the Covenant because they're going by a way that they have never been before. This way that we're going by is a call to a new height of holiness. We attain to union with God through silence, not by shouting or anything else, but by silence. And this place has been silent, it's been beautifully quiet. As people come in, they gaze upon all the different exhibitions, they sit in silence before Our Lady, and she pours into their souls oceans of grace, not just for them, but for their family, their friends, for all the people around them who are lost. Flew de Montfort prophesied that the end time saints would be disciples of Mary. They would build with one hand and fight with the other. This is us, we are the end time saints. We are the saints of this age of the Holy Spirit, which is something that Pope Benedict called this era and John Paul II. And all we have to do is just stand before Our Lady, give her our fiat, just do with me whatever you want to do. Give your fiat to Mary and she will use you powerfully and we can bring this nation back to God. So Pascal Mary, over here, you might want to know that this area of buildings is now a working farm. And everywhere from the church going in that direction would have been the original Saxon village where Richeldis lived with her Saxon manor house in the middle of it. God. She was the person who originally received the vision and the message of Walsingham right. from Our Lady. So her manor would have been about here. Nothing left standing now, but no. that's what we can conclude. That's right. So this rededication day, which is going to take place on Sunday, the 29th of March, which is the closest Sunday to the Feast of the Annunciation, yes. on that Wednesday, the 25th, um, what's that going to look like, James? Well, on that day, Monsignor John Armitage has invited every parish in England and Wales to take part in a rededication prayer uh, during Sunday Mass. And of course, this can be a personal thing. If you're at home at the time, then you can be doing this in your living room at home, as well as uh, together as a parish. Right, I think he has wanted for it to be so accessible that anyone, I mean, he, we're talking people in hospitals, in prisons, that maybe can't gather to be in a parish, um, that wherever you are, in your heart, you make this reconsecration. I think what's beautiful is that um, during the Mass that will be celebrated on the 29th, there will be two things. Um, there'll be the Angelus prayer, which we all know, mm. but it's really at the heart of our faith. And what I find so beautiful about it is that right in the center, you have this, um, may it be done unto me according to thy word that Our Lady pronounced, which is really that moment um, that we're now looking at, that moment, her fiat, which brought her so much joy because at that moment, the word became flesh, God made man, Christ among us. Um, and then there's this second prayer, which is going to be an act of entrustment, which has been written up where we all entrust our li lives to Our Lady. Yes. The five joys of Mary are mentioned in this poem called Sir Gawain and the Green Knight as a source of Sir Gawain's great strength. He was a knight in King Arthur's court, but he had a challenge and it was a big challenge and he had to face up to this challenge. And Sir Gawain contemplates the five wounds of Christ on the cross and he derives his courage from thinking about the five joys of Mary. And this is the poem, part of it. First, he was found faultless in his five senses and never failed 
the knight in using his five fingers. And all his trust in the field was in the five wounds that Christ caught on the cross. And wheresoever this man went in melee or in battle, his first thought was that over all other things, all his force in fighting, he found in the courage that he received in the five joys that the Holy Queen of Heaven had of her child. For his cause, the knight fittingly had her image painted on the inside of his shield. I've really enjoyed welcoming the school children here to the Dowie Tour exhibition. And they're really keen to learn more about Mary and her yes to God. We've had some activities for them to do, like the Dowie Tour quiz, and they've really engaged in that and enjoyed that. Um, but more, even more so, they've really enjoyed the prayer time and coming to the replica Holy House and praying before Our Lady and just seeing them in those moments of stillness that quiet and seeing how they really enjoy God's presence is just really beautiful to see. Monsignor John Armitage gives a really good reason for the rededication of England. He says, we need in our world the compassion, joy, beauty and love of Our Lady, of the Mother of God, so that the example of Mary will break open people's hearts. And I think that's so relevant for today, to bring a lost and broken people back to Christ's love. Right, and to know that joy that Our Lady knew at the moment of the Annunciation that the Saviour has come, to have that joy in their hearts. Yes. I, I really think this rededication is hugely significant, not only for our country, but for our world. Here at Walsingham, so many of our pilgrims come from all different parts of the world, but have made their home in England. But what brings them to Walsingham, of course, is the love of our Blessed Lady. So they are building themselves our dowry tradition. So that's our first of our tradition, which we celebrate and we want to renew, hence the rededication of England. But also to remember as well the message of Our Lady, share my joy at the Annunciation. Walsingham is a Marian shrine of the Incarnation. It is there for us to remember and to take to heart the message of the Annunciation that the Word became flesh and lived among us. And so bringing these two, an ancient tradition and a, a message from Our Lady to the people of this country, to bring these together so that we can remember them, that we can strengthen them, we can teach our young people about them, and we can do as Richard did in the moment of difficulty in his kingdom and in his life, he turned to Our Blessed Lady for her guidance and her protection. We do the same. 29th of March, the day of the dedication, with a simple prayer of the Angelus and an act of entrustment, we will be doing the same. The same as the King, the same which countless people have done in our country, turned to our Blessed Lady and sought her help and protection. The rededication of England is nothing less. One of the things I've been reflecting on has been how the message of this whole tour 
uh, is the message of Walsingham and it's so relatable for a young person. Uh, really, the heart of the message is sharing the joy. That's what Mary says to the Lady Rochelle this week. Share in the joy of the Annunciation. So really, share in the joy of Jesus. And here is here's something beautiful for each young person. You know, here we've got lots of, lots of young people starting university and there's all those hopes, all those ambitions and what are you, what are you looking for? I remember my experience of day one, university, I was looking for friendship. I was just looking to be, for anyone to like sort of hold on to and be friends with and, um, and be joyful with. And that's the message of, of Mary, the message of Jesus, the message of the gospel, uh, is that God wants us to be happy and to live life to the full. So here, the dowry tour, um, an invitation to all young people to come and share in the joy, share in Mary's joy, share in the joy of Jesus. There are many prophecies with regards to Walsingham and one of them, which is particularly striking, is in France, Our Lady of La Salette, who said that there is a nation in the north that will convert and it has been confirmed that that nation is England. Mm. And it says that there's a nation in the north that will convert and many nations after it will return to the Lord. Wow. So who knows? It's exciting. So this here ahead, this ruin, is the original priory, destroyed in the Reformation. What's significant, of course, is that this, of course, again, was the site of the Holy House, built by Richeldis. Um, after her vision, when she was instructed by Our Lady to build a replica of her Holy House in Nazareth, and this is where Richeldis, who would have lived somewhere in this direction, remember before, just past the modern day St. Mary's Church, just beyond there is where she would have lived. She would have looked out over here and seen the site that she was instructed to build the Holy House in wood. And then on the side of it, the Priory was later built. So this is the last part of the Priory still standing, the only ruin left. It must have been magnificent in its day, but it is still standing. Yes, it is. Our country's always been a Marian country. But now more than ever, we're re-entrusting ourselves to Our Lady. Let's see where she takes us. It's the start of a new journey. Very great joy for me to be here um, in the Metropolitan Cathedral of Christ the King in Liverpool and what I've experienced here is a really um, a contemplative experience of many people um, many many hundreds of people visiting from all over Liverpool to come and see our beloved Our Lady of Walsingham. This tour is in time going to lead to the total re-evangelization and conversion of England Mary's dowry back to Christ and it will happen very slowly imperceptibly in Mary's way with Jesus our Saviour at the helm leading the people of England um, back to Christ to live in his heart and to plead before him not only for this nation but for all the nations of the world. And so to end, I want to reflect finally on the words of two popes. The first is Pope Leo XIII, who said that when England returns to Walsingham, Our Lady will return to England. These prophetic words tell us that Walsingham is at the very heart of the spiritual journey in our country and is of enormous significance for the message of the gospel. The other is Pope Francis in his letter to prisoners where he wrote to prisoners and said that he understood that there was no way they could go through a holy door in the cathedral or shrine. 
He said, but every time you go through your prison door with a view to going to receive the sacrament of reconciliation or to go to Mass, then the full benefits of the Holy Year will be given to you. Now these two popes had a real insight. The first one setting the scene really for the rededication. It is about the return of our Blessed Lady to England. And the second by Pope Francis tells us that the rededication is not just something that will happen in one place. It's not just going to happen as a big sort of jamboree. It's a very personal offering. And as Our Lady offered her yes at the Annunciation, so we, on the feast of this dedication, on the 29th of March, we will offer our yes. It's a simple yes. And it's based on the Angelus, which is the story of the Annunciation. So it doesn't matter where we are. It doesn't matter who we are. You can give your yes. This is your gift. As England was once given by a king of great faith, he handed over his country for the care and the protection of our Blessed Lady. So we too, for the rededication, hand over our faith. This is our gift. This is our dowry. That we say yes, as Mary said yes, so that we can do as she did, was to offer herself to her son by doing his will. She was, during the course of the Annunciation, worried, concerned by what the angel was asking of her. But the angel said, do not be afraid, Mary, because nothing is impossible for God. And so today we are asked not to be afraid, to open our hearts as Mary opened her heart, to conceive within our hearts as Mary conceived in faith in her heart first, before she conceived him in the womb. So let us take the Lord to heart so that we, like our Blessed Lady, may be able to bring him alive to our world today by our yes, as we take this moment where we remember this great tradition of the dowry and we bring that tradition alive today as we make our yes and rededicate England as Mary's dowry.